What's up guys? This is John from Armbar Audio. Before we get into this week's podcast, I just want to introduce you all to a new friend of the Armbar Audio family. His name is Chuck Woolsey, and he's going to tell you a little bit about a brand new streaming service called Powerslam.tv. Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 3,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 100 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at Powerslam.tv. All right, so that's powerslam.tv. This service has a lot of the uh, promotions you've heard us talk about over the course of Armbar Audio. They've got AAW, they've got PCW Ultra, they've got Rev Pro, they've got Bar Wrestling. So, uh, yeah, go check it out, guys. You go and sign up, you're going to get the seven day free trial. But if you use our coupon code, Armbar Audio, that's going to be a one month free trial. One month of free, awesome, indie wrestling content so go check it out powerslam.tv coupon code armbar audio let's get to this week's podcast you are now entering armbar audio Hello, and welcome to Armbar Audio, episode 19. Alongside me is my trusted companion, John Kearns. Hello, everybody. Today is a monumentous episode as Ring of Honor star, the hired gun, the mercenary, the notorious Shane Taylor is here. Shane, how are you? I'm doing great, boys. Thank you for having me on. Oh, man, thank you so much for coming on and uh, uh, remembering... um, our little meal a long time ago. Uh, this has been John and I. John and I have been looking forward to this since we started yeah. uh, talking. Um, so I got I got some questions that uh, uh, you know a little far back um, when you were living in Pittsburgh. What were your right favorite hangouts or eateries or anything like that oh uh, i mean for me man like i for people that know me man I'm, I'm very much like an inside my house type person like i, I didn't really I, I didn't really go out all that much uh but i know uh her Manny's was good like yeah, we'd yeah. go there that that that's the staple and then there was uh there was a place in like North Versailles or something like that, that had like a cheeseburger hoagie that was like the best thing I've ever eaten in my life. Uh, <laughs> Damn, that I'm was really have to good. Try that. Uh, but other, other than that, I mean, I'd probably just have to go with 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 Permanis just because nothing else comes to mind right now. Right. Oh, definitely. Uh, for the listeners, the reason why we're asking these specific questions at this time is because our podcast is based in Pittsburgh. Uh, Okay, Shane. Uh, the second Pittsburgh question is: your fondest or least fond memories of being here? Oh my God! Um, <laughs> <laughs> and and you can't you won't offend me because uh, well because you probably know though this is yeah. what I'm saying like Pittsburgh and it's all, like Pittsburgh people and I I love the fans that come out to the shows but in general they're in their own world in a lot of things like. You could be driving through Giant Eagle, like going through the parking oh, lot. They will oh. walk out five feet in front of your car. Bro, you beef, oh, and they I look know. at you like I, you're the idiot. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Shane, <laughs> let me tell you, you're talking to two, one former Giant Eagle employee yeah. and an actual Giant Eagle employee right now. So if so anyone you know. understands what you're saying, oh, yeah. we bro. do. Yeah. And then like you got, in Cleveland, I'm like, bro, I'm like, yo, cars hurt. Like, if I run <laughs> you over, then I'm the jerk. No, nah, man. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you gotta watch where you're going, bro. And uh, and I have no idea, and to this day, no, no one can explain it, why there's a traffic jam going through the tunnels every day. Oh, I know. When, Squirrel Hill. Yeah. When on the and and for people that don't know, there is legit 
every morning five miles of backed up traffic going through these tunnels <laughs> that people go through every day. It now, makes what no sense. makes people oh. mad is, yes, what makes people mad is directly on the other side of the tunnel, there is no traffic. There is yeah. nothing. Like, people, all they have to do is just drive. Just drive the normal and, speed. And the road doesn't change yeah. sizes. The... The, 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 the tunnel's not going to close in on you. All you would literally have to do is just drive and there'd be no traffic. But people and don't there's seem to get that. signs all over that tunnel that say maintain, maintain speed through maintain tunnel. Maintain speed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is about tunnels, man. Like people It's so shit. funny because it's not just tunnels. It's mm-hmm. also weather. Right. Whenever like we get hit with with a, a lot of snow in the winter and everything, and as soon as it... As soon as flakes start to drop, people act like they don't they've never driven in snow. You've you've lived right. in this town your whole life. Yeah. You've lived in this city your whole life. You don't know how to swerve around potholes. You don't know how to drive in snow. You, like and what you know is what wrong saying? with you? And Pittsburgh is notorious for brutal winters. But uh what else we got? on to our next question. John, you yeah. wanna give him this one? So um so while you were here, of course, you worked with our local independent promotion, IWC, based in Elizabeth. So right. how was your experience working with IWC, and uh, who did you enjoy working with while you were there? Uh, IWC, uh, I always credit as being like my home away from home, and, and we've had some ups and downs throughout my 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 career, mainly due to me. Uh, transitioning from like competitive sports in college and stuff like a lot like that into wrestling and not understanding the intricacies of the business of wrestling. You know what I mean? No, uh, no. And my in my background, if I work harder than you and I'm putting on better performances and I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, I get that spot. Wrestling doesn't work like that. You know what I mean? So there was a lot of um, no. a lot of. Uh, Learning, learn, learning to play that game uh, when I first got there. Um, but some of the guys that I've worked with, uh, I mean, the who's who list of guys there from Jay's and Gory to Sheem, Zion, now DJZ. Yeah. Uh, you got, you know, Jack, Jack Pollock, who's tearing it up there now. He's, yeah. He, he, he's doing very, very well. Wardlow is doing very well. Um, you look at the guys that they've had. Facade is doing great things all around the world. Finally. Um, yeah, finally. I mean, I'm, I'm actually proud of him, all the stuff that he's been doing lately. Yeah, I mean, it's just they've, they've, they've churned out a lot of talent uh, that's been able to make uh, a big splash on the independent scene. Uh, you know, and, and I'm, I'm very proud of those guys. I, so, um, <laughs> I actually trained there for three months. And I couldn't hack it, man. I, I had a full-time job. Uh, I had full-time school. And I just, I realized that I loved the business, but that aspect was just not for me. And uh, the guys you're naming, like Shima Zion, he was still there. Uh, Fasad and Gory were still there. McChesney was still there. She- and, yeah, I, I can't leave out John McChesney. He is, yeah. he is, he has been the face of IWC when you know everybody was leaving when everybody was there yeah. he was the man you yeah. know what I mean so he and still is Logan Shulo uh, no, Logan was, Shulo yeah. yep and I, re- I remember I remember being in the YMCA in, in Northside uh, mm-hmm. uh, around Graves. this time and you know I mean? Jack uh, Pollock was working there and he yep. had a Bret Hart shirt on, and we started talking, and he was like, I'm saving up money to go to Lance Storm's school. And I was like, that's awesome. And now to see what he's doing and everything, that's wild. And that goes back to uh, when I saw you for the first time in Butler, PA. Um, and to see you now, uh, I know in, in the DMs I've told you, your your weight loss is astounding, man. Like... Uh, I remember sitting at that table and you were just all ears listening to the other guys as much as possible. And, and like, um, where did you find the motivation and how long was the process for you to slim down to what you are now? Uh, it, it was about 13 weeks. Um, 
and I, it, it it was really just a challenge to myself. I I'd, I'd been all on that path since having my daughter anyway. Um, right. Just because you know, what I mean, like I, I I didn't have any health problems. I, I blood pressure, cholesterol, all, all that is fine. In fact, a lot of my boys that are in way better shape than than I am have higher blood pressure and things of that sort, and they get mad because they're like, how the hell? You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, <laughs> this is what it is. Um, but really just, uh, especially in today's re- in today's wrestling scene, um, I-, I feel like bigger guys uh, don't get as much attention because everybody's worried about, you know, who what the high flyers are doing. You know what I mean? And that, that seems to be the... Mm-hmm. Uh, the three pointer of wrestling right now is who can do the dives and the flips and all of that, all, all of that, that stuff. And it's exciting stuff. So I'm not knocking guys that do that. Uh, but for a lot of companies, if you work a, uh, a, a more methodical style or, or an old school style, people tend to overlook you. Uh, so I knew what my cap was going to be, uh, if I had just stayed that size, but I'm, I'm a guy that likes to pride myself on being able to do a little bit of everything, you know? So, right. yeah. um, I, I wanted to test myself to see if I can do it and see what doors I, I could open, um, being a little smaller. I mean, I'm, I'm still 315, you know what I mean? So I'm not a small right. guy, like, <laughs> right. but, uh, uh, just seeing what happens if, um, if, if I didn't stay pigeonholed in that, you know, in that role. Right. <laughs> Uh, that's kind of funny where you were going with that because I have a list of questions that I brainstormed, that we brainstormed, and I'm just going to go into the, this question. How do you feel about big men in the business doing high-risk offense? Because you just uh, said a lot of companies uh, right now are focusing on the more acrobatic-type uh, wrestlers, and... Um, John and I and another friend were having a discussion about big men leaving their feet. And uh, specifically, like, when um, WWE stars like Braun Strowman does a splash or Lars Sullivan does a... a, a, a diving headbutt. Di- diving yeah. headbutt. And I said, if you're a big man, it doesn't make sense for you to leave your feet unless there's more than one opponent or the opponent is as big or bigger than you. And, and right. like, like you said, you were going into, um, uh, you know, you, you kind of have to have a hybrid now and everything. And if you do an old school type thing, not a lot of promoters want that because that's not the end thing right now. So how do you feel about big guys doing high risk maneuvers and such? I think everything, everything has a place. It's just a matter of when and where, um, for the longest time, I, I was trying to get my boy Key Lee to stop doing that meteor dive that he right. does, the the, to, the the tope he does. Yeah. But to his credit, he was just like, man, I'm going to do it because it gets the people on their feet every single time. And I, I couldn't argue with the guy. You know what I mean? I was like, you're right. Um, I, I think long term, it, it's just it, it's a lot more damage and wear and tear on bigger bodies than it is on smaller ones. Uh, we see that in the NBA, too. You, you have your traditional centers and big power forwards are now playing less and less because of the right. speed of the game. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, so you lose certain aspects, but even I in mean, the um, NHL, uh, you yeah, know, you know uh, I mean, like, like just as the game is so into, fast, guys are just not, you know, they're not built to be able to do it, do it like that. You know what I mean? Um, less goons and, and more finesse players. And, yeah. Yeah. And, which I mean, which is fine. Game games changing games evolve. It is what it is. Uh, but, there's just, um, to me, it's just, I, I think there's something special about those guys when you had your Vaders, when you had, you know what I mean? And, and like they went and they did their thing too and they left their feet when you look at your Stan Hansons and your Undertakers. On time and place, there's something for, for everybody. But I've always said if you got a guy my size doing, you know, a springboard arm drag, you know what I mean, or a hurricane yeah, run right. with, why, why are we doing this? Like, everybody else might as well go home. There's yeah. no... Nothing we're doing. You know what I mean? Like, there's no it way to build no up sense. that. So, yeah. yeah. But, so that's um, always been my thing. But to each their own. You know what I mean? If that's what gets eyes on you, then do your thing. Just be safe. 
I was, um, while you were talking there, uh, you know, it reminded me of the recent passing of Dynamite Kid and what happened to him in his life and how people were comparing Will Ospreay to him. And on, on Twitter, I, I said, how do you feel being compared? And he actually responded and he said, humbled. And I wondered what that meant. Like, was he ha- happy that people think he's like that? Or is he wondering if he should stop doing that? And, you know, you suggesting uh, to your friend to stop doing the, the tope uh, move. It's like, in my mind, it just triggered all of that stuff about Dynamite and Will Ospreay. And it's... With Osprey, with Osprey, that being said, I know he is a guy with a style that people think, you know, is reckless. But his style suits him because if, if you know Will, that's the kind of guy he is. He is a very, you know, do what he wants to do type of guy. And and to his credit, um, that's that's made him a lot of money. Uh, so when he, when I I personally think when he says that he's humbled, when you look at the legacy and impact the Dynamite Kid had. Uh, to be mentioned in the same sentence as that guy, uh, to to have someone compare you to him is a humbling thing. You know what I mean? It, it, right. It's very Absolutely. much an honor to be to have someone consider you as impactful or as you know or that next guy to lead your country, to lead your generation, to lead British wrestling in any sort of direction. You know what I mean? So that's what I think he meant by that. Um, yeah. It's it. it it's a respect thing. It's it. It's an honor thing. Um, and to be uh, and I mean that's he is the guy that's leading the charge right right now for British wrestling. So uh, that's that's a, probably a very true statement. Speaking of uh, British wrestling, you just came back from a tour of the UK. Um, mm. We saw some of your recent stuff with Rev Pro. Uh, you had a match against the great O'Korn on the uh, big Pac is back Guildhall special. Um, did ROH set that up, or was it, <clears throat> or was it all on you? No, I I set that up. Ring of Honor didn't set anything up. That was all me. That's awesome. Um, Good. For everything you. I do internationally is me. Um, there are some guys that they do place there. There are some guys that you know. That, that they like best, that they put on, on, on platforms to be right. seen and do that. Yeah. I'm not one of those guys. So everything I do is on me. Everything uh, with that tour, Man, all the so success cool. that I had, that's me putting myself there in, in positions to be successful. Um, and it's worked. You know, it. I, I bet on myself, as they say, and it paid off. Hell yeah, that's man. Awesome. I was very, I was into it. Like yeah. that was the second best match on the card, or or at least Thank you. up up there. You know, of course, I was looking for Pac because <laughs> oh, whatever. Of course, <laughs> uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, um, um, did they invite you back? Yeah, uh, two two thousand nine nineteen is going to be a very good year for me internationally. I plan on going back to Rep Pro, awesome. going back to I I I P W. Um, going back to going back to Southside, uh, I, I, I'm in talks right now to go to Italy and to France next year. Oh wow! Um, oh man, I'm so uh, proud of you. That's so yeah. awesome. Yeah, it's gonna be really, really. It's gonna be a really fun time next year. Dude, that's so cool. Sweet. Um, so why did you move to Houston, and uh, what are some differences between Houston and Cleveland? Uh, I moved to Houston because when I was up there wrestling the late part of, you know, 2012, 2013, 2014, um, I feel like I had peaked. You know, I, I had felt like at that moment I was one of the best guys in, in the area. Uh, whether other people agree or not is up to them, but I, I didn't feel like I was going to be in the ring or be given the opportunity to, be, to get in the ring with someone who was much better than me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And in order to grow, in order to be better in this sport, you have to be in there with people better than you. You have to learn. You have to grow. You have to sharpen your skills. You know, iron sharpens iron. And I, yeah, I, iron sharpens while yeah. I was in there with guys that I knew were good and guys that I, you know, that I think of as family, I, I just didn't think I was going to be in there with guys that were going to make me better than I already was. 
Um, so I, I, I came down to Houston under the advice of Ray Rowe to work with guys that I thought were better than me. Uh, you know, get on different platforms, um, sort of do a restart. Uh, and it was the best decision of my career. You know, moving down here led me to tagging with Keith, uh, being with Ray again, uh, meet, meeting Jax Dane and James Beard and, and, you know, Luke Hawks and going to Wildcat, making history for that company, which ultimately led uh, to the Ring of Honor stuff. And now here we are, fast forward four years. Um, and this kid from Cleveland that was supposed to be yeah. a statistic, yeah. you know, is traveling the world, getting ready to, you know, doing what he loves doing. So, um, I, I mean, it's, it was the best move I ever made. That's awesome. Awesome. Dude. All right. So, that's um, so cool. You mentioned Jax Dane. He was, uh, he's in the tag team with Crimson now, right? War Kings. Yeah. War Kings. Yeah. I saw that on WrestleCade and they came out with right. Hawk, I, I thought it was awesome. He kind of reminded me a lot of Ray. Animal, yeah, yeah, yeah. Animal, yeah. 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 Animal, my bad, yeah. my bad, my bad. It's all good. So you mentioned um, working for Wildcat, leading to Ring of Honor. How uh, how did you get your foot in the door with ROH? Well, Ray Rowe, uh, and for most of my career, any answer to um, any opportunity that that's come up or how things started ultimately always comes back to Ray Rowe. Uh, the guy is, um, I, my career would be much different if, if he wasn't in it and he wasn't a part of it. Um, he would, uh, go so far as like, they, um, they would have flights for him, like say from Houston and Nashville and he would turn down flights to drive with me to oh, go wow. to the shows you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like that's the kind of guy he is. You know what I mean? It's just so he could go, I could show face, and he could say, hey, this is my guy Shane. If there's any opportunities to do anything, can we maybe give him a chance to show what he can do? Like you know a, what I mean? Like, so like a mentor that. or big brother. Yeah, I mean, he is. He, he is legitimately my, my, big, my big brother. Uh, blood couldn't make us any closer. Uh, and uh, he's, he's, he's the man. Um, but yeah, like, like, like we, we've done that Houston, the Nashville drive numerous times, um, Houston to Atlanta, Houston, you know what I mean? Like yeah. wherever we had to go that, you know, schedule permitting, you know, he would just jump in the car with me and we would just, and, and, and we'd go. All right. So, um, so looking at where Ray Rowe is right now. Could we possibly see Shane Taylor in NXT? Uh, anything is possible. You can't say you know. You can't say no to anything in this right. in this line of work. Um, the the goals that that we had are, are very much mirror images of each other. Uh, both of us wanted to um, were fans of Reign of Honor, and we wanted to be there and be champions there. Uh, with the legacy and the history that they have to add our names to that book is something that we were both uh, very excited about doing. Uh, both of us wanted to go to Japan, you know, yeah. uh, and, and, and to see not only him make a legacy in our way, but make a legacy in New Japan and now be where he is uh, and be in line uh, to be a big star where he's at now is absolutely in, in, incredible. Uh, there's still some more goals that I want to check off my check off my list before I do that. Right. Uh, so we'll see what happens this year. Uh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. You, you can't ever say you can't ever say no to anything. Yep. Never so we'll say see. never, right? <laughs> Speaking of Japan, um, have you ever been there? Because I know that you have wrestled uh, Minoru Suzuki and Hiroki Goto. Through Ring of Honor's Andy. Global Wars, but have you ever been there? I have never been there. Uh, I've I've wrestled Yano, I've wrestled Evil, I've been in the ring with Killer Elite Squad, oh, Minoru wow. Suzuki, I've been in the ring with Goto, I've been in the ring with with G.O.D. I've been in the ring with a lot of New Japan guys, a lot of New Japan talent. Sweet. Um, I, was, I was um listening to a, a recent interview with you, I think with our friend Wilford Watches, and he was talking about uh, the cutthroat era, cutthroat era BCOGs 
uh, recruiting. Uh-huh. And I just wanted to uh, say that his sentiment with you being involved in that would be make so much sense. Uh, <laughs> because because your character uh, in ring and uh, your persona would fit so well in there. Um, and, and and the best part about about that is for those that really know me, it's not a character. That it's just me. You know what I mean? Like, that's, <laughs> like once once all the lights go out and like once it's time to really get down to business, and I've been like that my my whole life. It's you know it, it's I'm I, I'm loyal to those who are loyal to me. You know, and uh, that and that's who I look after. Anybody else really doesn't matter. What when it comes down to the important things, you know. So, uh, what they've been doing is, is is incredible. I feel like it's it's breathed new life into the group, um, and it's brought a much needed uh, sort of badassery back to the group. You know Agreed. what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I'm 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 anxious to see what they do. You know, it, it's a fun time. Nice. All right, we were talking a little bit about Ring of Honor. Um, I guess at least in the in the United States, do you feel that Ring of Honor is the second biggest dog in the fight, uh, second to WWE, or um, do you feel that with the recent success that we've seen from Impact, that they have reclaimed the number two spot? Uh, I think ROH is still is still number two. Uh, I yeah. I think with the business relationships that we have and the things that that we're doing, the growth that we have, um, I I think uh, that we're still leading that 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 charge. And in order to maintain that, because you can't discount the the success and, and the talent that Impact has, in order to maintain that. Uh, got to continue to develop stars you've got to continue uh to invest in people the right way um and not just go with the same flow that other right. people are doing that's just signing whoever you think has buzz or whoever you know what i mean because that that doesn't that do, that doesn't help because all that lets guys do is just essentially springboard you know uh from roh to wherever they want to go and that's not what we want Ring of Honor to be. That's not what I see Ring of Honor as. Ring, Ring, Ring of Honor to me is not a transition company. Right. It's a destination. That's, you, you, you see what I'm saying? And, I, and, that's, um, and, and that's what I want people to understand. That's what I really want to get across to people You know, when, when, when they see me is this is not a guy that's just biding his time until I go elsewhere. I am right. in Ring of Honor because I think Ring of Honor is the place to be. Yes. Um, and I, that's just how I see it. I definitely agree with you. Yeah. Uh, even though um, perception is reality, and I feel like uh, in the past few years, a lot of, uh, I would say, Evolve and Ring of Honor have been seemingly kind of feeder systems to uh, what Triple H is doing with NXT. But then, uh. But then you have guys like Jay Lethal and the Briscoes and um, Christopher Daniels and yourself who who have stayed there and and uh, are trying to facilitate that ideal. Yeah. And, I, and I love that. Uh, in an interview with Alicia Atal, you said you'd love to face Jay Lethal. Um, who outside of Ring of Honor would you like to make an example of? Oh, that's a. I like the way you put that question. <laughs> that's good. Uh, huh. You know, where I come from, the. Uh, t- in order to be feared, be respected, or however you want to word it, you have to go and you've got to find the baddest dude and you've got to beat his mm-hmm. ass and you've got to make sure that people know you're the one that did that. So you earn that rep. You know what I mean? It's not the smartest way to live. I understand. The, uh, yeah. it's, <laughs> the it's the yard. yard. Uh, exactly. Exactly. And, and people that don't know that environment or haven't had to live in that environment don't understand it and wouldn't survive it. Um, mm-hmm. So in order to do that, in order to garner that respect and garner that that attention I, I feel like a guy that you would have to 
go up to and establish yourself with would probably be Minoru Suzuki. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, one-on-one, I would love that chance. Uh, when you look at the things that, that he's done, I have nothing but respect for him. He's an incredible, he's a legend, you know, he's, he's incredible. Um, but I think that matchup would be great, you know, uh, uh, just to see that era versus mine and kind of that, the, you know, the, the young lion challenge sort, sort, sort of deal uh, yeah, right. is always is always cool to me. So that would be one that I would really like to have one on one and just see what happens. You just have to watch out for any counters to that punch, right? You know. Oh yeah, I mean he's <laughs> he's, he's, he's 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 got them all too, especially with 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 Saber there. He's got an infinite, mm-hmm. you know, an infinite knowledge of submissions and. And um, and just tactics that you know break people. Uh, so um, it's probably not even the best idea to even want to fight the guy. You know what I mean? <laughs> it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. Nice. <coughs> so um, you said you'd want to face Jay Lethal. If yeah. you were to become Ring of Honor World Champion, which should happen eventually, um, who would you choose as your first uh, person to defend it against? Jay Briscoe. Briscoe. Nice. nice quick Without answer. hesitation, Jay, Br- Jay Briscoe. Um, awesome. I'd love to see I've, that. I've, I've, I've always said, and Rare and R- R- of Honor has done this throughout their 16 years, you'll have guys there that establish not only legacies, but when you think about that time period, they controlled the era. Um, yeah. When you think of guys like Brian Danielson, he had his era. Mm-hmm. Samoa Joe had his era. Um, Nigel... Nigel McGuinness had his era. Jay Briscoe has his era. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And in order to cement the legacy that I want to have in ROH, I've got to beat guys like that. Yeah. Um, I've got to be able to not only beat guys that people think I, I, I can beat, but beat guys that they think I can't beat. You know what right. I mean? Um, and he is numero uno on that list. Um, Personality-wise, we we match up just about the same. It's like fighting a mirror image of myself. Uh, the guy's tough. He's gritty. You know, he, he, he's willing to lay his body on, on the line if it means do more damage to his opponent. Um, and out of the ring, you know, he's been a guy, like, like I said, with Kenny King, who's helped me tremendously in ROH to avoid uh, a, lot of the bullsh- a lot of the bullshit that happens in wrestling. You know, he's sort of steered me away from that. Uh, giving me nothing but great advice. You know what I mean? And he doesn't have to. You know what I mean? He right. easily just blow me off. You know what I mean? I, I could be just another guy, but that's not him. You know, he, he goes the extra mile. Uh, same right. with Mark, too. Um, so in, in a situation or a big money fight like that, if I've got to put any championship on the line against somebody, I'd want it to be him. All right, nice. Um would you would you say that Jay is your favorite opponent thus far, and if not, who? Favorite opponent, like in my career? Yeah. No, my my favorite opponent in my career is Ray Rowe. Nice. Uh, just because we bring, uh, but similar to that, like there's there's certain guys that bring out the best in me, and I, and, and it's not to say that I don't give my best every time because right. you do. But there's some guys that bring that extra out of you. Uh, Ray Rowe is that guy for me. Jay Briscoe was that guy for me. Like they they do things that bring out the extra gear um, that sometimes you you need to really have those stellar performances. Um, so uh, my favorite opponent, just because of the amount of times that we've done it, and uh, because of who he is to me, Ray Rowe is my favorite opponent uh, so far. Uh, and I, I don't think that's going to change in my career. Nice. Okay, so um, speaking about all this, speaking about wrestling, all the places you've been, um, what are some promotions that you'd like to work for that you haven't had the opportunity to work for yet? Uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, you've got a lot of great ones. Obviously, uh, starting with the big one, I would love to go to New Japan. Uh, I, yeah. I think... That would be a great fit for me. Uh, convincing other people of that 
is harder than than you can realize, but it is what, what it is what it is. Uh, obviously, you know, hitting all the big independents, you look at like Defy in the Northwest, right. you look at PW, Eugene, Cali, PCW Ultra, um, and you look at your, your Beyonds. I, I've been to Beyond once. I would love to go back. Uh, I definitely nice. think uh, P W P excuse me P W G um, is a place that um, I would love I I would love to go. Uh, Ray's been there. Keith's been there. All my boys have been there. Um, so I'm kind of just the last one to show up to the party. Uh, but we'll see. Other than that, man, um, there's I, I know there's uh, uh, there's a, a big a big scene in Australia right now uh right. so i would love to go down there um and again just you know progress you know things things like like that things that i haven't done that i know or or that guys that i'm a fan of that, that are from there i would really like to try those places out and, and see what i can do right. from what you just said thinking of beyond wrestling you yeah. against chris dickinson and jocka is is like a dream for me um, That'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, also, like uh, you said, progress. Uh, I could easily see a nice match with Rampage. Uh, I think he's still there, unless he went to one of the other British promotions. Um, Maybe. And my my thought was Walter. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, dude. Oh. There's, there's there's guys. You know what I mean? Like 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 there's certain guys that that you see, and you go. All right, yeah, I want to fight that guy. Right, you know right. what I mean? So, uh, if, if if he's the baddest guy there and he's the champion, then that's who my target is. You that, know, so it's, um, he's a very funny case because everyone's saying that he signed, but uh, when he talked, when I heard interviews, he sounded like a Will Osprey where he didn't really want uh, the the kind of schedule and everything. So I'm, I have a feeling he's going to be. Uh, NXT UK guy who's still going to be able to work uh, other promotions. So right. hopefully we get to see a Walter uh, versus Shane Taylor match. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, g- getting off of that subject into a more lighter note, uh, also in the inv- interview I watched with Alicia and yourself, you mentioned DMX as the artist you go to for when you train or get ready for a match. Uh, who who are some other uh, musical artists you listen to while doing other things like when you're on the road with uh, Ray Rowe or anyone else or when you're chilling out playing video games yeah. or uh there is there's a lot that I that I that I go through um I will listen because I'm 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 a fan of the skill I'll listen to Common Most Def. You know, Talib Kweli, uh, KRS One, Rock Him. Real you know, hip hop. Right? Uh, yeah, man. And and again, I'm not gonna be one one of these cats that just knock the newer stuff. But <laughs> to me, and how I imagine wrestling or anything in any public platform, your job is to reach as many people as possible and and to deliver a message. Right. And my question to a lot of people is, when you listen to that stuff, what is the message you get? You know what I mean? Like, I'll, I'll let you think for yourself on what it is, but what what do you take away from that? After listening to that or after seeing that, do you come away a better person or a worse person? Right. You know what I mean, that's does how the, I that's how I judge things. Does the um, lyricism make you think, or is it dumbing you down? Like, exactly. Uh, Common exactly. and Talib and Mos Def are older, but there are newer artists who do that, but they're they're not shoved in your face yeah um exactly like because big most, crit because, and, uh, because, yeah because it's not it's 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 easier to just say oh i'll pop these pills or i'll hit this lane or i'll do this <laughs> and, and do that that doesn't get you anywhere right. there's nobody that i know that's successful that's doing those things right not i mean look at pimp world. c you know what i mean huh i said look at pimp c man he talked about lean yeah. all the time and it was his ultimate demise. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 I, I'm not for anything that 
only enforces the most negative and destruct and destructive aspects of our culture. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and and that that goes from music to movies to how people stereotype guys in wrestling as well. Um, the last thing that I'm going to do is be some sort of character or have people or have kids like my daughter see me as just another extension of the angry black guy or the thug or the pimp or the gangster or anybody else that they want to, you know what I mean? That's just not going to happen. Um, um, my job, you know, as, as one of the guys leading this next generation uh, is to start to change the culture you know, and while I, and while I may not change the world, I may ignite the spark. Like Tupac said, I may ignite the spark for someone to go change it. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? So that's what my job is. Awesome. Dude, I love that. That yeah. that just made me a bigger fan of yours. Yeah. Um. Um. Speaking of that, uh, the characterization of African American males in uh, wrestling. Um, yeah. I will. I'm gonna tell you a funny story. Um, I I stopped watching wrestling during my high school years, and then right after high school, I got right back into it. And uh, me and some friends were watching Monday Night Raw, and the Hart Dynasty at that time had the titles, and Crime Time came out and stole them, and ran. Uh, my right. friend's little brother came in, and I said, "Hey, Phil." That's what Vince McMahon wants you to think of African Americans. Yeah. And and my friends started laughing and were like, Why what are you talking about, Tim? And I'm like, You gotta see through this BS, man. You gotta see through right. all this crap. And then like now we're seeing other people like your your boy Keith, yourself. Yeah. Uh people would even say New Day. But there are there are things about the New Day that harken back to uh, those types of profiles. Uh, yeah. Like with the pancakes, um, a lot of people just see that as being fun or whatever. But if you look into it, there is a book called uh, Little Black Sambo or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. I, I don't know all of the exact things because I, I've, read it, I've read about it a couple of times, but it, it really puts... Uh, what's going on with the New Day in a whole different perspective. Um, mm. And then, like... Essentially, essentially, the the way things have gone is you are either the angry black dude, the uh, the thug, the, the wild man, the savage wild man from a country that has no technology, right. or you are the super non-threatening, dancing, Ted, Ted teddy bear, singing, sh- shucking and jiving type character. Yeah. Right. Those are the those are those are the stereotypes that you have. And and Um, and it's like um, I want to see people just allowed to be wrestlers. Exactly. You know. Exactly. And (laughs) and to me, and for me, growing up, that that's why. And I I know it's not a popular opinion, but I was never a big fan of guys like Junkyard Dog or Coco Beware, any of those guys like that. And while I will not knock what they've done, the doors that they opened i didn't know anybody that wore chains on their neck and barked like a dog right i didn't know anybody like that oh my god i didn't know anybody like slick who was hey super come on man yeah eat my yard and <laughs> all the other stuff that they did i i just didn't see anybody like that so none of that related to me um now i i know gangsters i know yeah. guys like like that none of them yeah. acted like that you see what I'm saying? Mm. Um, for me, wrestling didn't click until I saw Ron Simmons yeah. win yeah. the world championship uh, uh, against Vader. And I, I saw, okay, this is a guy that looks like me that just fought hard, was a college football player, just busted his ass and beat this monster yeah, on his and, own merit. He no shucking, he no won. jiving. Yeah. He didn't have to lessen himself. He didn't have to be a stereotype. It was just him. You know, and going point, out there and uh, and succeeding. You know, and 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 the issue with that is, and and the issue with or the the the, the reason you don't have more of it is because society is already conditioned to believe one thing. Definitely, right? yeah. And so 
you'll find that when you actually look into it, the only people making money are those that tend to go into those roles because that's all that's all people want to see. Yeah, un- because that's all they think you are. Unfortunately, yes. And yeah. and for me, uh, and you know, you know, and that that stems into a bunch of other it other issues when you talk about you know who has the right to protest and right. you know what what people think about you know the police and things of that sort uh but my job and, and there's guys out there that are doing their damnedest to lead you know a new generation of thinking when you look at guys like shane strickland who's holding I, I world championship all across the country when you look at guys yeah. like ach or jonathan gresham or Darius say, lockhart yeah. Or myself, or you know, like Keith Lee, guys that are yeah. breaking that mold and showing we can be ourselves, we can have depth of character, we 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 can be anything that anybody else can be, and do it successfully um, and make money from it. You yes. know, there's there's no reason why this can't be an evolution of ours, just like. Uh, the women had had theirs and, and went from saying, "Hey, we're not just bra and panty wrestlers now. Like now, we can main event shows and exactly. we can lead the charge. Yeah, so can we. You know, what I mean, we don't have to be thugs and we don't have to be gangsters and we don't have to play into the street roles or make jail sound like it, like it, like it's a fun place to be or anything else like that because we can. Guys. Yeah, that's exactly, exactly. what I was gonna say. That's why exactly. I love seeing guys we can move forward and yeah. evolve as well. I love seeing non-stereotypical guys like yourself, like Keith Lee, Jay Lethal, Strickland, um, even um, Cedric Alexander on 205 Live, having yeah. success without being stereotypical. Yes. And if you look at the women, I, even people like Bianca Belair, Sasha Banks, mm-hmm. non-stereotypical um, people having success. And even if you want to call them stereotypical, you could even say um, a team like the Street Profits having success, even though they do sort of a somewhat stereotypical gimmick, but just being as naturally over as they are. Right. I mean, and there's and there's a very fine line. Or a guy like Team Dream. Dream is, uh, being, also. Also. Yeah. yeah, between what the line is and, and you know what I mean? Like, like there's... And and to each their own. You know what I mean? Right. I, I I'm not I'm not I'm never gonna knock anybody for doing what they have to do exactly. to feed their family. Yeah. I, I understand. You know, uh, but it goes back to just like the music. E- 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 uh, everything has to have a message. Yeah. And my and and the message that you're sending is what. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. So for me, and and, we'll, and when you look at the history of wrestling companies in general, not just you know. Uh, not just you know with with Vince and all them, but around but around the world, there's been very few to have uh, people like myself lead the company. Um, and I mean, Ring of Honor's only had one in 16 years, and that's Jay Lethal. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, and, and when you look even further, the only two guys like myself to even hold sing- singles championships in 16 years has been Jay Lethal and Kenny King. Yeah. You know? Right. And that wasn't until last year. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, right. uh, so it, it, it's my job and it is my goal to try to change that to not just here in the States but all around on the world. Yes. Even in, in the UK. I don't know of anybody except maybe Sugar Dunkerton with, with title to hold a world championship in any UK company. Right. Uh, and definitely not the main one. Um, I think New Japan has only had Bob Sapp. So Ooh, yeah. The, mm. So the way, so so the door is open to making history, and I've always been one to say, well, why not me then? You know what I mean? Like, so, someone's got to be the guy to change it. It's going to happen. It might yes. as well be me. Right. And That's you, awesome. That's an awesome you kind of remind me of Bob Sapp. Listen, he, he he looks a million times better than I do, but uh, yeah, but but Bob, Bob Sap, but Bob Sap is cool. Yeah, um, we got so, three more questions yeah. here, and they're they're not gonna be uh, they're not gonna be short, I guess. Uh, right. John's Talk. gonna give you one, and then I'm gonna end with the last two. Right. 
So, okay. in your eyes, um, mm. what is the, I, I guess, the one most important thing a wrestler must have to be a success? Heart. Um, Heart, yeah. In, in this line of work, you are going to hear no way more times than you hear yes. You are going to hear pe- people tell you you don't have it. They, they will stop your progress because they don't like what you wear or they don't like what you say or you're not in the right you're not in the right groups you're not kissing the right people's asses the whole nine yards there, there's a million reasons that people don't succeed but in order to succeed you have to believe in, in yourself with the utmost fervor like you've got to, you've just got to know that you're going to be successful and then work your ass off to make sure that when you get your opportunities, you're ready for them. Um, and that's and that's and that's it. it. It's just always knowing, you know. And and I, I I can't even lie. I said I've always known because there was times that I was like, man, this is just it's not working. What am I doing wrong? Um, and Ray Rowe and my wife, you know, have been so instrumental in, in keeping me focused and keeping me in a positive frame of mind. Um, when, when, when things were tough. So, um, it, it, it's just the ability to see past all the bullshit and just know right. where you're going. Nice. That's awesome. Um, I saw an interview you did with a guy named Cato, where you mentioned a match between Kerry Von Erich and Warlord garnering your attention to wrestling. Aside from that moment with your father, are there any specific wrestlers or matches that inspired you to become a wrestler? Um, when again, uh, the one with Kerry Von Erich and Ron Simmons, just the way the fans reacted to the match caught my attention. But what really made me want to be a wrestler is that moment with Ron Simmons beating Vader. Like, I thought to myself, man, I want to be able to, to do that. To, to yeah. have so many people of, of every background, of every ethnicity, of every socioeconomic status all standing there cheering, all, all kids of all backgrounds, tears in their eyes. You know what I mean? Yeah. To be able to celebrate that moment. Um, to, be so, to be someone that can unify people uh, and you know, make a difference at Definitely. the same time. That's what I. That's what I saw. That's what I, I was like. Okay, that's the guy that I need to be like. That's what I need to emulate. That's the bar that I have to reach. Um, so that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, it's like when uh, Bill Goldberg made his big comeback to WWE. He said the thing he missed most was being a superhero for for uh, kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you've mentioned Ron Simmons a lot, and um, I know that uh, in WCW he was he was looked at like that. When he came into WWE, they they did a lot of twerks, and then finally they let him just be himself. Uh, how do you view uh, Mark Henry? Because I kind of think that Mark Henry, despite the sexual chocolate part. The beginning, the beginning of his career and the end of his career was, I feel much just him, than yeah, than uh, but the Attitude Era was just insane altogether. Yeah. Like oh. everybody, like praises it so much because it drew a lot, but when you go back and watch the actual so raws and stuff. Crazy. Bro. Yeah. It's just ridiculous, man. Like I couldn't sit. I just half. watched. I just watched a promo with the Nation, uh, and like DX, and they were talking about the Heart Foundation wearing hoods right. and saying the N word and all kind of like ridiculous stuff. And I was like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> right. It was all across the board. I mean, if it wasn't for like, if it wasn't for Austin and The Rock, no one would care about the Attitude Era. Yeah. I think or DX. But, like, uh, uh, all the mid-card and low-card, all, all of it was just insane. Um, mm. But, Shane, uh, we've had you here for a while. Here's our last question for you. Uh, 
who, uh, in your opinion, is the Mount Rushmore of of wrestlers? Like your Mount Rushmore, and why? Oh wow! Yeah. Okay. Hmm. That that that's a tough question because so many great guys embody so many different things. Right. Um. I think when you have something like that. I think you would have to put The Rock in there, mm-hmm. obviously, for just total overall crossover success, worldwide draw and yeah. appeal to be able to do in-ring stuff, out-of-ring stuff, movies, TV, uh, you know, a- HBO hosting shows, doing whatever he wants to do. The guy has legitimately done everything there is to do. Right. Um so I think he is the pinnacle of what we strive to be uh, mm. as far as, you know, the ability to earn money and be impactful on society. I see that. Um, yeah. uh, when you have, if there was another one, uh, man, I think Ric Flair, just as far yeah. as, uh, the, the legacy and the technician he was, the um, the ability to create stars in, anywhere he went, to create long lasting memories and feuds, and to be and to make yourself immortal in this sport uh, yeah. is something that he did better than anybody. Um, there's hardly anybody that I talk, talk to that doesn't know or hasn't heard the name Ric Flair. Oh, definitely. Um, you know, uh, so People as far as creating a legacy and being yeah. remembered, um, that's that's one thing. I, I like he would be out there for that. Um, the Undertaker would be up there. Um, yeah. As far as what he's done in his, his career, and not only that, but the leader he was in and out of the ring, uh, the respect that he's garnered throughout his career. Um, there's nobody that you see in any interview that ever has a negative thing to say about the guy. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, so to, to be a guy that my peers can trust, uh, that people know that, you know, you, you deal straight up, no bullshit. It's just it, it, everything you see is what you get. Uh, that's, that's what I strive for. So he would be up there for me. And one more. <laughs> I mean, just just because he's been in it, Ron Ron Simmons for me. Um, and, and this is just my personal one. Obviously, you yeah. would say you know Shawn Michaels or Stone or you know Shawn Michaels or Bret Hart or any of those guys. That nobody's wrong, but Ron for being able. And credit to Bobo Brazil as well because he legitimately is the first. Uh, African American world champion, but Ron gets the credit as far as it being recognized, and right. for them to be able to open that door and show that there's possibilities outside of what the norm was then and break that mold um, is something that guys like myself be- benefit from to this day. Uh, the ability to show that you know when given the opportunity. We can be just as big as stars and draw just as much money as anybody else. Uh, because of guys like him, I have the opportunity now to be able to take care of my family. And uh, and, and he's always going to hold a place in history for me. Very nice. Well, I uh, think that's a damn good answer. Yeah, all of those made a lot of sense, especially coming from you and... Uh, Shane, it has been a pleasure for John and I to have you on the show. Thank you so much for um, responding back to us. Um, Of course, man. Anytime. Is there anything you would like to uh, say before you leave or plug or anything like that? Um, If if anybody is so inclined, please, uh, at Shane216Taylor. On Twitter and Instagram, go ahead and give me a follow there. Uh, if you happen to be in the merch buying mood, <laughs> prowrestlingtees.com slash Shane Taylor, all lowercase, 
a lot of great shirt designs up yeah. there. We'll link them um, in the, the they, description. They make great Christmas gifts. Make they make great Christmas gifts. So you know, uh, go ahead and check and check those out. Um, and I, I just want to say thank you, guys, man. Much any, appreciate. Uh, any upcoming events for you? Uh, yeah, I will be in Philly, uh, December fifteenth. Uh, for the final battle TV taping, I'm uh, not on uh, the pay per view as people already know, right. um, but uh, I, I will be at TV in Philly, uh, and people are definitely going to watch want to want to watch what I do when I show up. So keep even an eye out. Um, so keep yep. an eye out for that. <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you so much, and it's just been thank you a major pleasure uh, on both our ends. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, John, any last words for him? Yeah, I'm fine. All That's, right. That was good stuff. Well, thank you for your time, Shane, and uh, we will be sure to follow your career. Thank you, boys. Have a good one, yeah? You as well. So, with that, we had our interview. It went great, John. Yeah. I'd yeah. say. Uh, next week, we will be covering uh, ROH Final Battle with Omega Luke of the Omega Luke Wrestling Podcast and our good friend, our man in the field, Anthony Abini, who will be in attendance. Uh, we will also be covering Progress Chapter 81, Pour Some Progress on Me. Uh, it's another can't-miss episode. Uh Wherever you are in the world, whether it is morning, noon, or night, peace and love to all of you, uh, and have a great one.